Welcome to the Did Nothing Wrong podcast, where we cut through the noise and help you make sense of the chaotic information space around us. I'm Griff Somke. In this episode, we talk about the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025, what's in it, and the amazing level of dishonesty from all the principals involved once it got some mainstream sunlight. Stick around. This is a crusade! This is a holy war against the deep state! Where are the dictators? Where are the strong men? Donald Trump is our instrument for retribution! I'm going to fight for Christians. I'm going to fight for white people. They have the Great Reset. We have the Great Awakening. And why shouldn't I root for Russia? Because Which I am. I want to see these people go through misery because of their grooming against our children. After the assailant entered the home asking, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Those are the very same words used by the mob when they stormed the United States Capitol. I did nothing wrong. Project 2025 is a 922-page plan created by the Heritage Foundation that's a blueprint for a conservative presidential administration to roll out new rules, staff agencies, and departments with people who agree with them ideologically and fire any government employees they find disloyal, among other things. And Donald Trump loved it. Because our country is going to hell. The critical job of institutions such as Heritage is to lay the groundwork, and Heritage does such an incredible job at that. And I'm telling you, with, uh, with Kevin and the staff, and I met so many of them now, I took pictures with among the most handsome, beautiful people I've ever seen. I didn't like that picture. If you could lose that picture, please, would you, Kevin? But this is a great... No, he says I won't do that. But this is a great group, and they're going to lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our movement will do and what your movement will do when the American people give us a colossal mandate to save America. And that's coming. That's coming. Now, this is pretty well known amongst people who are politics obsessives, like probably everyone listening to this program. But it really hadn't hit the mainstream until the 2024 BET Awards when the host, Taraji P. Henson, decided to tell people to go look it up. Did you know that it is now a crime to be homeless? Pay attention. It's not a secret. Look it up. They are attacking our most vulnerable citizens. The Project 2025 plan is not a game. Look it up! And people did. And oh boy, oh boy, did they ever not like what they found. Looking at Google Trends, a lot of people searched it. More people were searching for Project 2025 last week than were searching on the search term dinner. That should tell you something about just how many people were checking this out and deciding that they weren't too into this. And it caused the Trump campaign to go into full damage control mode. All of a sudden, you've got both Trump and Heritage releasing statements basically pretending that they'd never heard of each other. Trump's statement, posted on quote-unquote Truth Social, went like this. Quote, I know nothing about Project 2025. I have no idea who is behind it. I disagree with some of the things that they're saying, and some of the things they're saying are absolutely ridiculous and abysmal. Anything they do, I wish them luck, but I have nothing to do with them. Unquote. And then... Less than two hours later, a Project 2025 spokesperson. As we've been saying for more than two years now, Project 2025 does not speak for any candidate or campaign. We are a coalition of more than 110 conservative groups advocating for policy and personnel recommendations for the next conservative president. And they are running for cover on this. This is a clip from Fox 13 Chicago. For the former president, he's now distancing himself from the controversial Project 2025. That's a massive proposed overhaul of the federal government, which includes firing tens of thousands of government workers and replacing them with Trump loyalists. It also calls for cutting Social Security benefits. It was drafted by longtime allies and former officials in Trump's administration. Trump posted on his social media website that he knows nothing about it and has no idea who's behind it. This comes days after the head of the think tank responsible for the program, suggesting there would be a second American revolution. All of a sudden, Project 2025 is absolute electoral poison. It's gotten so bad that now you've got both Trump and the GOP 
both pretending to be moderates on abortion now, saying they just always wanted to leave it up to the states. They're not trying to go for a full-on abortion ban or anything like they've been saying for the last, oh, I don't know, decade or so. They want to leave it up to the states now. Really? Okay. Do you believe that? Okay. But they are all over it in their numbers. This is from CNN. Walk us through what exactly you found as you look through this list of names. Sarah, when Donald Trump asserted last week that he didn't know who was behind Project 2025, we decided to take a look at all the authors and contributors who are listed on Project's 2025 Signature Project, this 900-page playbook for us, Trump's second term. And we found at least 140 people who were authors or contributors had prior experience working for the Trump administration. Now, this includes people who rose to the highest levels of his government, including six people who served as cabinet secretaries, including HUD Secretary Ben Carson, who remains very close to Donald Trump, as well as the uh, cabinet secretary in charge of the Office of Personnel and Management, that's Russ Vaught, who I should also point out recently helped put together the RNC platform that Trump approved. Uh, There's also several ambassadors he appointed. There are people who worked very closely at shaping his immigration policies, as well as someone who served as a deputy chief of staff. And there are also more than 100 organizations that are heavily conservative that helped advise this project. We found many Trump allies in those organizations as well, including his former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, one of his top advisors, Stephen Miller. I want to talk about Stephen Miller and his involvement in all of this for a second. Stephen Miller is, in the opinion of this podcast, one of the most vile human beings to come down the pike. Stephen Miller is a racist. Stephen Miller is cruel. And in a just world, someone like Stephen Miller wouldn't be anywhere near the levers of power. And Stephen Miller is a liar. Not only that, he thinks it's funny to lie to you. When we interviewed Katie McHugh in episode 105, she confirmed this. The anti-birth control thing has been a um, pretty big theme on the right. I just think people are noticing it more, especially after the fall of Roe v. Wade. Right, because they, they said they'd never come for that. They said, oh, no, that's not what we're here for. That's not what we're trying to do. And now they're here for it. They love lying about that stuff. Oh, my God. Like, it is just with such a glee. Like, I used to feel this, too, on the far right. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're totally going to outlaw abortion and people are going to go to jail. We lie because we like to know that the liberals knew that we were lying and couldn't do anything about it. It just made them angry. Yeah. And they think the hypocrisy is funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you said, there's nothing you can do about it. And too bad. Ha ha. We're going to keep doing this shit. And that's something I really want to make sure gets emphasized here because, you know, as somebody who grew up pretty liberal, somebody who has always been somewhat on the left my entire life. That's definitely how I reacted when I heard that, when people were doing it. Kind of like, you know and I know, you don't mean that. You know and I know that you're going to take this and do horrible things with it the minute you get a chance. And it's really nice to hear somebody who was at one point inside of that movement very deeply confirm that we weren't wrong or being paranoid or being unfair about any of this. It was like, no, that that was actually completely the play. Please tell Griff he's not crazy. No, you're not. You're not crazy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I feel so much less gaslit now. (laughs) I was going to say, we were definitely gaslighting you. I'm sorry. You're hundred percent right. And remember, she was a direct report to Stephen Miller. So with that context in mind, here's what Stephen Miller tweeted about Project 2025. After people noticed he was in a recruitment video for Project 2025's online academy, designed to get aspiring 2025ers, can we call them that? 2025ers? Yeah. Aspiring 2025ers onboarded and up to speed. Quote, I know you're upset because your candidate has soft pudding for brains, but that's not a recruitment ad. A while back, I made a video for students on how to build skills. I have never been involved with Project 2025. Not one word. But keep hoaxing, losers. Hoaxes are all you have. Unquote. Hmm. That's a pretty definitive statement. You hear that, you think, okay, guy's absolutely flat out denying it. However. Oh, you were finished? Oh, well, allow me to retort. This video is located currently on the Project 2025 site, my guy. 
You come in at the 43 second mark saying, quote, senior advisor to the president, unquote. Conservatives exist to conserve the ideals of the American founding. These ideas are actually the source of our recovery. On January 20th, when the president puts his hand on the Bible, everything changes. Our goal is to ensure that the conservative administration that takes office in January of 2025 is ready on day one. The next conservative president will only be able to do so with your help. I'm the president of the Conservative Partnership Institute. Vice President of Hillsdale College. The head of the Office of Justice Programs. Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs. Senior advisor to the president. Assistant Press Secretary. Nice try. Oh, and I should also mention that his organization, America First Legal, is listed on the Project 2025 site among its advisory members. What's that, Jamie? I'm being told that as of a few days ago, America First Legal is no longer listed as an advisory member of Project 2025. <laughs> so thanks for confirming once again that we can't believe a word you say. Remember, if it looks like a weasel and lies like a weasel, maybe it's actually Stephen Miller. And Stephen Miller isn't the only Trump administration official linked to Project 2025 in there. Nope. Former Trump assistant Spencer Kachan, former Trump Office of Personnel Management Chief of Staff Paul Danz, and Trump advisor Troop Hemingway also appear in the video and are listed on the Project 2025 website as creators of the plan. And Trump campaign press secretary Caroline Leavitt also appears in the video right after Miller. You heard the clip at the beginning. That was before the shitstorm of bad publicity hit. And this is what they're trying to get you to believe now. There's a psychological term for this, and it's called gaslighting, which the American Psychological Association, or the APA, defines as the act of manipulating another person into doubting their perceptions, experiences, or understanding of events. It's a form of emotional abuse that can make victims seem crazy and create an unsettling interpersonal environment. And they do it all the time. All the time. It is ridiculously common because it works. Most of the time, it works great. You do this, you can get people to believe what you want them to believe, they seem to forget how many times you've done this to them in the past, and life goes on. But this time it's not working because there's simply too much evidence. And even a cursory Google search will produce hundreds of results of the people involved talking about the plan. Heritage has an entire site devoted to it. Hell, they have an online training academy, like I said, for people who want to participate in it. And oh, by the way, that's rain on your head. They're not pissing on it. No, 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 it's rain. And they'll tell you that these are just policy proposals and that there's nothing official in there. However, the Venn diagram of people who are affiliated with Project 2025 and people who help draft the 2024 Republican platform is basically a circle. This is from ABC News. Last week, former President Donald Trump attempted to distance himself from Project 2025, a sweeping plan to overhaul the federal government proposed by a closely aligned conservative group. I know nothing about Project 2025, Trump claimed on social media, referring to the 922-page plan put forward by a group of conservative organizations led by the Heritage Foundation. I have no idea who's behind it. Trump's comments made it seem like he had no connection to the controversial plan or those involved in it. But when Republicans meet in Milwaukee next week and vote to officially confirm the first new Republican Party platform since 2016, which Trump and Republicans across the country will run on, that platform will have been crafted and influenced by individuals with deep ties to Project 2025. In May, the Trump campaign and the RNC announced their platform committee leadership team, the senior officials tasked with drafting the Republican platform, and named Russ Vout as the platform committee's policy director and Ed Martin as deputy policy director. Both have ties to Project 2025. Vout, who previously served Trump as the director of the Office of Management and Budget, authored a chapter on quote, executive office of the president, unquote, for Project 2025's mandate for leadership, the conservative promise, which Project 2025 describes as a comprehensive policy guide for the next conservative U.S. president. Vought Center for Renewing America is also listed as a member of Project 2025's advisory board, according to the plan's website. 
Martin, who the Trump campaign and RNC named as the party's deputy platform policy director, is the president of the Eagle Forum Education and Legal Defense Fund. Eagle Forum is also listed as a part of Project 2025's advisory board. Editors note, the Eagle Forum is Phyllis Schlafly. You can look them up. They go back quite a ways. These are extremists, and they are OG extremists. Back to the article. Other members on the RNC platform committee with ties to Project 2025 include Family Research Council President Tony Perkins, who has been vocal in his efforts to ensure that the Republican platform does not soften its language on abortion. Perkins has said that he's involved in the crafting of the 2024 platform, and Family Research Council is also an advisory board member to Project 2025. Unquote. Now remember the name, Tony Perkins. He has been one of the most vocal and visible anti-abortion, anti-LGBTQ, and anti-Islamic activists of the last several decades with his Family Research Council, which is an SPLC-designated hate group, by the way. He even once gave a speech to the Louisiana State Chapter of the Council of Conservative Citizens, a white supremacist group that advocates against miscegenation and whose website once described black people as a, quote, retrograde species of humanity, unquote. Perkins addressed the group while standing in front of a Confederate flag. So when you see he's involved in this, you know there's nothing moderate about it. You got Trump officials, hate mongers. I mean, what's not to love, really? So what all is in Project 2025, anyway? Well, BBC journalist and former Did Nothing Wrong guest Mike Wendling wrote a great piece about it, which I'll link to in the show notes. The article says, quote, The Project 2025 document claims four main policy arms. Restore the family as the centerpiece of American life. Dismantle the administrative state. Defend the nation's sovereignty and borders. And secure God-given individual rights to live freely. Project 2025 proposes that the entire federal bureaucracy including independent agencies such as the Department of Justice, be placed under direct presidential control, a controversial idea known as unitary executive theory. In practice, that would streamline decision-making, allowing the president to directly implement policies in a number of areas. The proposals also call for eliminating job protections for thousands of government employees who could then be replaced by political appointees. The document labels the FBI a bloated, arrogant, increasingly lawless organization. It calls for drastic overhauls of this and several other federal agencies, as well as the complete elimination of the Department of Education. Eliminate the Department of Education. Let the states decide what, how, even if the kids actually learn anything. Cool, cool. I'm sure they'll make sure to teach a fair and unbiased version of history, fair and balanced, that tackles all the hard and uncomfortable parts just like they do in Florida and Texas. The article continues. Increased funding for a wall on the U.S.-Mexico border. One of Trump's signature proposals in 2016 is proposed in the document. Project 2025 also proposes dismantling the Department of Homeland Security and combining it with other immigration enforcement units in other agencies, creating a much larger and much more powerful border policing operation. Other proposals include eliminating visa categories for crime and human trafficking victims, increasing fees on immigrants, and allowing fast-tracked applications for migrants who pay a premium. In other words, build the wall is back. And when you compare this to Trump's already stated intention to start deporting people in huge numbers on day one, well, it's not much of a stretch to think that things are about to get very cruel very fast. Moving on to the economy, the article says, The document proposes slashing federal money for research and investment in renewable energy sources and calls for the next president to, quote, stop the war on oil and natural gas, unquote. Carbon reduction goals would be replaced by efforts to increase energy production and energy security. The paper sets out two competing visions on tariffs and is divided on whether the next president should try to boost free trade or raise barriers to imports. But the economic advisors suggest that a second Trump administration should slash corporate and income taxes, abolish the Federal Reserve, and even consider a return to gold-backed currency. That last part is a bone for the Ron Paul audit the Fed crowd. 
But the bottom line is that we're going to drill, baby, drill and cut taxes on the rich again. On abortion, Project 2025 does not call for a nationwide abortion ban. However, it proposes withdrawing the abortion pill mifepristone from the market and using existing but little enforced laws to stop the drug from being sent by the mail. The document suggests that the Department of Health and Human Services should maintain a biblically-based social science reinforced definition of marriage and family. And when you think about it, they already got the Dobbs decision, so calling for a nationwide ban is kind of pointless. It might fire up people. So let's just take the option for a medication abortion off the market and hope that the dog whistle of having guys like Tony Perkins involved lets the base know where we're at on this, right? Moving on to tech and education. Under the proposals, pornography would be banned. And tech and telecoms companies that facilitate access to such content would be shut down. The document calls for school choice and parental control over schools and takes aim at what it calls woke propaganda. It proposes to eliminate a long list of terms from all laws and federal regulations, including sexual orientation, gender equality, abortion, and reproductive rights. Project 2025 aims to end diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in schools and government departments as part of what it describes as a wider crackdown on woke ideology. It's all the terrible culture war stuff wrapped up in a neat package, really, and sadly, this is pretty boilerplate for them right now. One could say, well, that's all unconstitutional, and you'd be right. <laughs> but with the current Supreme Court, I don't think that's a bet I'd make. Here's Kermit Roosevelt III, constitutional law scholar at the University of Pennsylvania, telling MSNBC's Ali Velshi that this could very easily lead to, quote, an America you won't recognize, unquote. I want to talk about this Project 2025 situation. It's it's uh, not the first time that the Heritage Foundation has put out a playbook like this. Uh, it's not even the weirdest thing in the world that a, an outside group would do it. It usually is left to either the candidate or the party to put out a platform. Uh, but why is this uh, so concerning uh, in light of the fact that the, that the Heritage Foundation and these conservative thinkers seem to have a willing participant in Donald Trump. He's, depending on what day, he seems to be distancing himself from it or not. Uh, but it, it does look like a playbook for the next administration. Yeah, it does. You know, so the Republicans didn't have a platform last time. And their, their position now seems to be, we're just the party of Trump, whatever Trump wants. So then you have to ask, well, where's Trump going to go? Who's putting these ideas out there. And Project 2025 is a terrifying blueprint for an authoritarian future. And if they can succeed in this, and the Supreme Court is helping them at this point by weakening the administrative state, if they can succeed in this, it's going to be a very different country. It's going to be an America that you won't recognize. So let's talk about the people who run the Heritage Foundation. Here's Heritage Foundation President Kevin Roberts explaining Project 2025 on Steve Bannon's war room. What we've done with Project 2025 is, as you've heard from Paul and, and Johnny and Spencer, all, just a slew of, of Trump administration alums, is prepare the next president, looks likely to be President Trump, to go into office and as soon as the oath of office and inaugural address are done, to start dismantling the administrative state. Roberts also went on former Trump deputy assistant Sebastian Gorka's show to talk about how, quote, there are parts of Project 2025 that they won't share with the left, like executive orders, unquote. The basis of the plan is public. You can see that at project2025.org. There are parts of the plan that we were, will not share with the left. The executive orders, the rules and regulations, just like a good football team, we don't want to tip off our playbook to the left. Ooh, not sketchy at all. Here's Kevin Roberts telling the audience at a Heritage event that they should use discernment when discussing their opposition to contraception because their extreme position is unpopular, even among Republican voters. Thinking about all of the policy arenas in which we have a hard time using the vocabulary of our faith to apply to public policy, this one is the hardest, and that's contraception. I mean, so much so that in, in my career in public policy, when family policy comes up, the question of family for formation comes up, the question of the, whatever the role of the state is in that comes up. If, if I were, as a 
Roman Catholic, if, if I were sitting with my family or with friends in this room in a, in a Catholic setting, I could speak in a certain way about the teaching we all believe. We may find, you know, a, a difficult teaching, but we, we accept it. We believe in it. We love it. But even in a politically conservative setting, that can be a very difficult thing to advance. A majority of Roman Catholics don't believe in that teaching, if public opinion surveys are the case. And so that same Holy Spirit gives us the words, the gift of discernment, the gift of, of wisdom to know what to say at the right time to the right person. And sometimes, depending upon the setting, and you know this, I'm saying this just to remind us, sometimes the right thing at the right time to the right person isn't the full teaching of humanity Vitae, right? It isn't the full teaching of contraception. And recognizing that that's not the time is no way turning into Judas. Discernment. That is evidently how they say lying to your face in Christian. Heritage isn't even mad at Trump for the disavowal. They know it's part of the game. Here's Kevin Roberts again on Right Wing Talk Radio explaining it. So when you see President Trump say this and what you envision as being behind it tactically. Well, I, I think it's the, the sign of a great leader who understands he's in a, a terrific political news cycle. He's run a really good campaign from start up to this point. And the, the left's mis, mischaracterization of Project 2025 had become a liability. I think we, we've seen that really turn around in the last few days since that statement. So no hard feelings from any of us at Project 2025 about the statement, because we understand Trump is the standard bearer and he's making a political, tactical decision there. See, you're not supposed to be listening to this. This is where they let their hair down and get really honest about what they want to do. Make no mistake, they're coming for abortion, birth control, IVF, and anything else that doesn't line up with their version of sexual morality. And there's no exception for rape or incest either. They may not tell you that. Remember that discernment stuff? <laughs> but it's what they believe. Let's let Kevin Roberts break it down for us again, since he's really good at that. As Christians, as Roman Catholics, we believe that no abortion can be morally justified. And even in most American politically conservative circles, either in particular party apparatuses or in organizational movements, that is not, by any stretch of the imagination, a majority opinion. By any stretch. And in fact, if you look at public opinion polls since the glorious Dobbs decision, that's become an even more difficult position to hold. In fact, I can think of, just as I, I'm mentioning these comments, two U.S. Senate races that purportedly the pro-life candidate lost because he adhered to that position. Too many in the media and, and in and politics want to make it impossible to adhere to that very justifiable position, difficult as it may be in a political sense. But this has become even more difficult. I mean, who, who was anticipating that on June 24th, 2022, when I know all of you and millions, tens of millions of people in this country and around the world were rejoicing over the Dobbs decision? I know I didn't see that. We've spent a lot of time in the last year with some other pro-life organizations not having to worry so much about the law and about the policy, but on messaging. How is it that we can be better messengers for our side, not betraying our principles, but leading with messaging, which, of course, in this case, focuses on the mother, focuses on the second life, also has a, a we ought to have a certain comportment as we're talking about that on TV and on the radio, these are all good. You see, we can do these things without betraying what we believe. But then ultimately, if a savvy kind of hostile reporter wants to ask follow-up question after follow-up question, eventually they'll get to the question that someone who believes what we believe on abortion will have to answer honestly. And that's the rub. It's funny to me how they mentioned the radical left when he makes it clear earlier in the statement that his views are an absolute minority view, even among right-wingers, and that the vast majority of Americans do believe in exceptions for rape and incest, yet were the radical ones somehow. Figured that one out. He also went on to illustrate the benign nature of Project 2025. 
let me speak about the radical left. You and I have both been parts of faculties and faculty senates and understand that the left has taken over our institutions. The reason that they are apoplectic right now, the reason that so many anchors on MSNBC, for example, are losing their minds daily is because our side is winning. And so I come full circle on this response and just want to encourage you with some substance that we are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. Quote, we are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. Just sit with that for one second. If the left allows it to be, in other words, we're going to do what we want. And if you get out of line, it's going to get violent. Wow. That's just... Uh, it's a classic when they tell you who they are. You just have to believe it. Just sit with that for a sec. It's so subtle. Like, we aren't the ones causing trouble because our way is correct. And anyone who disagrees or is in our way is a subversive and deserves what they get. And Trump loves him. He can't stop saying nice things about the guy. Heritage Foundation president, somebody else doing an unbelievable job. He's bringing it back to levels it's never seen. Dr. Kevin Roberts. Kevin, thank you, Kevin. So you can bet that as soon as all this blows over, there'll be BFFs again. Kind of like old Kevin said earlier, sometimes you just got to discern your ass off. And there's more great people involved. The best people. Take, for example, John McEntee. According to ABC News, quote, as recently as April, Project 2025 senior advisor John McEntee, who was previously a White House advisor under Trump, said he was working to integrate Project 2025 with the Trump campaign while also attempting to create a distinction between the two entities. Obviously, there will need to be coordination, and the president and his team will announce an official transition this summer, and we're going to integrate a lot of our work with them. But I think keeping the two separate is actually the most beneficial way to go about it, McKenty said on the Daily Wire's Morning Wire. By the end of Trump's first term, McEntee was tasked with scouring federal agencies for people who were not fully behind Trump's agenda. In October 2020, he drafted a memo arguing that Trump should fire then-Secretary of Defense Mark Esper, three weeks before Esper was terminated. Now, why did he want to fire Mark Esper? Might have had something to do with Esper's lack of enthusiasm for shooting protesters in 2020. He's going to finally give a direct order to deploy uh, paratroopers into the streets of Washington, D.C., and I'm thinking with weapons and bayonets. And this would be horrible. What specifically was he suggesting that the U.S. military should do to these protesters? And he says, can't you just shoot them? Just shoot them in the legs or something. We also know that McEntee is big on community and helping those less fortunate. Here's McKenty talking about the work he does with people who are experiencing homelessness. So I always keep this fake Hollywood money in my car. So when a homeless person asks for money, then I give them like a fake $5 bill. So I feel good about myself. They feel good. And then when they go to use it, they get arrested. So I'm actually like helping clean up the community, you know, getting them off the street. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not a particularly religious person, but I was raised Catholic. So I've read a lot of the source material that these people are working with. And after hearing that, I'm actually reminded of Matthew 25, verses 40 through 45. The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or as a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison? and did not help you. He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, 
you did not do for me. He also has opinions on gentrification. If white people are so awful, why do you keep moving to their neighborhoods? I wonder who he means by you here. Anyway, he also made a dating app, which seems more like a way to hustle lonely MAGA guys out of their cash. This is from Amanda Marcotte in Salon. Quote, when McKenty isn't scheming for ways to purge the federal government of reality-based bureaucrats and replace them with MAGA loyalists, he's busy separating foolish MAGA men from their money with a dating app called The Right Stuff. The app, which was funded initially by far-right tech investor Peter Thiel, purports to connect Republican singles looking for love. In truth, it's not clear what the app does, though many users express concerns about the data it may be collecting. One thing that seems unlikely is that it's a sincere effort to get Republican users to the wedding altar, unquote. It'll be in the show notes. Read the whole thing. It's, uh, it's really kind of sad. And it gives you an extremely clear picture of the kind of sociopaths that are running this thing. Oh, and did I mention that they're having a policy fest, which sounds really lit, by the way, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on the opening day of the Republican National Convention, which they're also sponsoring? There's a problem, however. This stuff polls really badly. Like, really badly. According to YouGov, quote, Not only have few Americans heard much about Project 2025, but few have an opinion about it. 48% don't know whether they have a favorable or unfavorable opinion, while 13% have a very favorable or somewhat favorable opinion, and 39% have an unfavorable opinion. That's driven by Democrats, amongst whom 8% have a favorable opinion and 64% have an unfavorable opinion. Most independents with an opinion about Project 2025 dislike it. 7% favorable, 38% unfavorable, while Republicans are more positive. 26% favorable, 12% unfavorable. People have, it seems, in fact, looked it up, and they don't like what they're seeing one bit. So Trump has been trying to pivot as a result, like trying his damnedest. He's pretending he doesn't know any of these people, that he's not really in favor of all of this stuff that he's come out in favor of previously. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking that that 7%, 38% split with independents must have them shook because their whole strategy right now to become president again, to get elected relies on convincing independent voters that Joe Biden can't do the job. But if the independent voters realize exactly what the job is that Trump wants to do, it looks pretty bad for them. So you've seen a softening of tone from Trump as well as him running as far and as fast as he can from this thing. So whatever you think of Biden, however mad you are at the Democrats, it's worth voting for him to try and make sure this stuff doesn't happen. Because it will happen. There's too much money and power lined up behind it. And if the GOP gets the presidency and Congress, it'll happen so fast your head will spin. By this time next year, we could be living in a completely different country. And we've got plenty of these people in their own words talking about what's going to happen if they win. Here's current federal prisoner Steve Bannon. November 5th is Judgment Day. January 20th, 2025 is Accountability Day. Trust me, on the afternoon of the 20th, we're also going to start the pick and shovel work to take apart the administrative state and to take on its rogue element, the Praetorian Guard, the deep state. We're going to run them all out of town. Are you prepared to fight? Are you prepared to give it all? Are you prepared to leave it all on the battlefield? Ladies and gentlemen, it's very simple. Victory or death. This is disgraced U.S. Navy reservist and Nazi collaborator Jack Posobiec. They are the ones that are seeking to destroy not our democracy, but our constitutional republic. And is it incumbent upon us to restore it? 
We've watched as our schools have turned into incubators of hatred, hatreds of Christians, hatred of straight people, of white people, of successful people, hatred for our forefathers, hatred of our history, hatred for those who founded from nothing, the greatest country in the history of the world, the United States of America. Lock up the criminals, liquidate the, the administrative state. Are you prepared to fight? Are you prepared to take their best shot and say, is that all you got? They say Alexander gathered his Macedonians before the march on Persia. Well, I say, I see before me a gathering of Magadonians here in this room. And after, after we raise that swamp to the ground, we will establish the new American Republic on its ashes. And our first order of business will be righteous retribution for those who betrayed America. They will be judged. Here's Laura Loomer and Tim Poole talking about what they hope to see in a second Trump administration. I'll put it this way. Should Democrats be in jail? No question. When Donald Trump gets elected, should he start locking them up? No question. Should there be lists of Democrats that need to go to jail? 100%. The reason for that is they, they've committed crimes. We need to make sure that when Donald Trump wins, we've got an attorney general, a deputy attorney general, a head of the CIA and the FBI. Uh, Cash Patel would be fantastic. We can have for attorney general. There are some names floating around. And then they can start uh, having their investigators and, and the feds issuing subpoenas pulling up evidence and with real evidence, bring them to judges for warrants. Then these people can spend three, three years of their lives fighting tooth and nail for the crime against the, uh, the government for crimes they committed and we can prove. Yeah. And the reason why we put them on trial is that we can show the whole world we will uncover what you've done. We will make sure everyone knows and you will be held accountable for it. Not just jail, they should get the death penalty. You know, we actually used to have the punishment for treason in this country. <laughs> and then... There's Ivan Raiklin. According to both Ross Story and the Daily Beast, Ivan Raiklin, a former Defense Intelligence Agency employee who has dubbed himself, quote, Trump's future secretary of retribution, unquote, he's got a list of over 350 people that he calls the deep state target list. The list includes the names of Democratic and Republican elected officials, journalists labeled Trump's political enemies, U.S. Capitol Police officers, and witnesses in Trump's impeachment trials and the January 6th committee hearings, among others. And, you know, this might be bluster. We've heard this kind of bluster before out of people in the Trump administration, and it hasn't come to anything. But the part about this that scares me is that his plan is to get the so-called constitutional sheriffs to take care of these people. We've discussed constitutional sheriffs before with Dave Nywert. You should really go listen to those episodes because the idea of those people becoming the enforcement arm of the Trump retribution agency, that'll chill you. That'll really make you sit up and think, damn, this is bad. Even Trump himself has some opinions on what's going to happen if he gets in again. For hardworking Americans, November 5th will be our new liberation day. But for the liars and cheaters and fraudsters and censors and imposters who have commandeered our government, it will be their judgment day, their judgment day. They're going to tell you they're just trolling and you're just triggered and it's all in your head. They're already trying on Twitter because remember, this is what they do. It's all a joke until it isn't. Thanks for listening to the Did Nothing Wrong podcast. If you want to hear more, you can find us on the web at didnothingwrongpod.com. Please make sure you subscribe to get our content straight into your inbox. You can also follow us on Twitter at GrizzaBJJ, G-R-Z-A-B-J-J, as well as DNW Pod. We're extremely grateful for paid subscriptions and donations that allow us to keep doing this important work. Thanks, and remember, everyone mentioned did nothing wrong.